guys today. I am ranking all the new products I tried in September. I have 22 products to rank for you and 10 of these came from the Sephora friends and family sale and then I have other things that I've tried and this is going to be a long video. I am going to try to be quick with my thoughts. So I have got two more fails, a lot of products that are just fine for me, and then only seven favorites, which is kind of a bummer. So starting at number 22, the worst product of the month would be the Say Hydra Beam Concealer. I got half HB, the lightest color. The color was fine. This is such an oily product. When I was taking the wand out, oil was coming from the top of the wand down, which is obviously like super gross. But as I was applying it, I felt like the oil and the pigment were sort of separating and it almost seemed like a dry oil that was like setting down so quickly before I could blend it. It did not look smooth. It really emphasized everything under the eye and just looked ugly. So I do not know how people are liking this. And it also the applicator is super duper stiff and like small. So I thought that was just terrible. And my next fail at number 21 is something that could have been a fine. It ended up being a fail because I returned it and I probably should have returned a few more of these products, but that would be the Huda Beauty Glowish Blur Jam Primer. And a lot of people really like this. Makeup by Cheryl, who has dry skin, and then Babs Beauty, who has like combo skin. And it's supposed to be nice and blurring. It felt cooling on the skin. Maybe it was a little bit blurring. I didn't love the consistency of it, and it really just did not make enough of a difference in the look of my skin and my pores. I feel like my pores are not gigantic, but still with some makeup they show through and I literally was not able to see a difference with this. So it did end up going back. I would love to hear your thoughts. If you tried it, I have a hard time with primer seeing a huge difference. It's really about if it makes me oily, if my makeup looks nice on top and the way it feels consistency wise. Then in the fine category, this is teetering though on a fail at number 20. I have the Maybelline Superstay Vitamin C Skin Tint in 110. Great shade match for me. I wish that I had tried this sooner because I could have returned it. And I got this from Ulta so I could get store credit, but it was so inexpensive. I feel like that's a lot of work to get store credit. And I have heard most of the good things about this, which I don't quite get because this does have shimmer in it. And I did not try the Makeup by Mario foundation, so I could be totally wrong, but I feel like people that like the Mario would like this, people that hate the Mario would hate this. Maybe that's not true, but coverage wise, I think is great. I wish they could take out the shimmer and I feel like it's like decently, like long wearing, it didn't patch off, but just the shimmer in here emphasized all of my lines in my hairs and my pores. And once everything was set, it wasn't as bad, but girl, it did not look good. I feel like if you have, like who does not have peach fuzz? I just think that this is something like close up, not gorgeous, far away, it is better. I will try to use it up since I did not return it within the time, but I do not like the shimmer in there. Speaking of shimmer at number 19 is something that is in my project pan. This is the Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Setting Powder Ultra Blur. And the texture of this is actually quite nice. When I put it on the back of my hand with my puff, when I take the puff again with the excess and just wipe over top, it just perfectly lays flat and smooth and presses into the skin so nice so i really like the formula of this and it is more lightweight on the skin than the regular powder and you probably won't be able to tell here but there is absolutely a shimmer in this i would say it is a shimmer similar to this skin tint so when i wore them together it was a little bit like yikes so i do feel like while this is blurring depending on how much you use it, what other products you use it with, I feel like this can also emphasize peach fuzz and lines at least close up. I do think that this is way better than the actual glowy version of their powder. That almost looked like a loose highlight. It was so intense. So this is a little bit more 
subtle. So I think this is fine enough that I can use it up and I'm so sad about that shimmer because I actually think the formula feels really nice and looks pretty on my skin from far away but close up don't love the shimmer. At 18 is something that might surprise you because I've only heard rave reviews about this. This is the Kofi Azari Eyes Cream Shadow and Bronze Brocade. I was nice enough to get this for my friend Lauren. I had picked it up during the VIB sale but then I returned it because Lauren sent me hers. First off, I absolutely hate the packaging. I hate how messy this is. There really needs to be some sort of stopper on here to help keep it creamy, but also to keep it from being so messy. This is nice and pigmented. This is a really pretty color and it has a like cooling feeling to it. It definitely applies easier with your finger than a brush. I like to do a layer with a brush for precision and then I will go back in with my finger to intensify the pigment and the shine. And when you sort of blend it out, okay. You know what I mean? Like, yes, that has some shimmer in it and it's pretty, but like, okay, it's just not special. I didn't have much issues with creasing, but I know some people do. I always use a primer under my cream shadows. This is pretty, but you know, I'm not looking to use this as a base. I'm looking to use this on its own, which is how most people tend to use it. And I don't know, it, it just is not that special to me. So I'm glad that I was able to see that and just get one because I definitely was interested in Satara Sparkle maybe, and now I'm not gonna get it. Oh, also, I do wanna mention that I feel like by the end of the day, this looked a little bit more dull than when I first applied it. It wasn't like super crazy or, or patchy, but I feel like it just looked a little bit more dull. At number 17 will be the new Merit Cream Shadow. I will say that the brush that came with it, I do think is really nice with this formula. This is great to you know, apply on the upper lid and this one on the lower lash line. I did do a first impression on Instagram with this product that I will have linked for you. The packaging is absolutely gorgeous. And the color that I picked is mid-century, which out of the more like skin tone shades is the third color. It's just this nice like warm brown. And I just think this is not quite the type of product for me. It is really creamy and you are able to, as you can see, get a good blend on it, but you do need to do one eye at a time. You have to move very quickly because as it already has, it will set down. And it looks really nice on my hand, but my hand skin is a little bit tighter than my eye skin. So I felt like I just had a little bit more trouble with blending around the edges to make it look very seamless. And I think I just need to play around with it more. And I, you know, just need to get used to this. I was interested in a few other colors, but I just, I don't need them because I don't really use matte cream shadows like this. And I doubt that I would use this as a base i know some people have my friend lauren has and it worked nicely as a base for her but you know interesting product pretty packaging brush goes well with this formula but not exactly a product for me i had very minimal creasing with this and i did find that this was pretty buildable as you can see in my demo i did build it up on my lid next at number 16 would be a Lawless Forget the Filler Lipstick. Now they released a bunch of shades. I did do a lip swatch video, which I will link for you. So far, I've only worn one color and this is Soft Truffle. It's a really pretty more mauve tone. And this to me is very similar to a MAC like satin lipstick formula light vanilla scent i like the packaging it does have a magnetic closure it feels slightly cheapy slightly it's just not very heavy but the magnetic closure is really nice and i love the color of the packaging so i do think like these are nice lipsticks but for me i have never been able to get on with mac lipsticks except for a few specific formulas and this just reminds me of classic MAC. So for that reason, you guys might really love it. For me, it's just okay. I noticed that I had a little bit of gunking on the inner corners, but it could have been that I had some like makeup, like foundation or powder on my lips, like that had gotten there from application that was under the lipstick. So this is fine, nothing super special. My opinion might change as I try more colors, but so far I have just tried Soft Truffle. Next at number 15, we have the Kaja 
Juicy Glass Lip Oils. They have five shades, but one of them is exclusive to their site. But then these colors, one, two, four, and five, you can buy from Sephora. The packaging is so casual. You have a little bead in the top that is shaped like a heart and rattles around. So these colors are basically totally sheer. And then these have a little bit of a tint. The clear ones are Rose Hip Spritz and Grape Glow Teeny. And the tinted ones are Plum Paloma and Raspberry Refresher. And these do smell like the fruit that is in the name, but they are lightly scented, which is great because I really, well, I guess not all fruit. This is rose. I do not like scented lip products unless they're mint. I especially don't like rose, but this is very subtle. So I will swatch one of the clear ones and one of the tinted ones for you. I again did do a lip swatch video, which I will have linked down below. You have this nice chunky applicator, which I think is really just cute for lip oil and that's rose hip spritz. Just has a wonderful amount of shine. And then I will try the deeper one, Plum Paloma. And you can see very sheer amount of color, but there is some. And I do think that these are nice. They have a really glossy, juicy look on the lips. There is a little bit of thickness, a little bit of stickiness, which helps it last longer on the lips. I don't find it to be sticky in an uncomfortable way. And I do think these are quite nice. I do think you only need to get one of them. So if you want a little bit of a tint, get one of these, but you can see they are super lightly pigmented. So maybe go with whatever scent you think that you would like the best. But I do think it's worth checking out, but I have other lip oils that I prefer. Next at number 14 is the Lawless Perfecting Powder, talc-free skin smoothing powder. I got the shade Fair. I was bummed I did not get this in PR because it was such an amazing gift. It was the powder, the new double-ended brush, the concealer, and a makeup bag that looked amazing. So I was really bummed I didn't get it. But I wanted to try this out because Samantha March really loved this powder. And this is how much powder that you get. Not a ton. And there is a little spongy guy in the bottom, which I have not used this is a super soft powder when i put my brush in here very gently i get a lot of kick up and that is nice if you're wanting a lot of powder to be applied to your skin and this does have a good amount of pigment to it so i do think that you could use this like a powder foundation but it's not going to give you like a mask appearance you could also use this as a setting powder that's really how i've been using it and i do think this is really nice i feel like you will go through this super quickly though once I use this up, I won't repurchase. You guys know I am a loose powder person overall, but I just really wanted to try this one. But I do think this gives a good amount of coverage. I would not say it is mattifying, but it is going to like set your makeup a little bit more than the Kosas Cloud Set powder. But I do think that this is a good one. It just isn't the most exciting product and it was pricey and I feel like I'm gonna go through it really quickly. These next three products could really be ranked interchangeably. At number 13, I have the Glow Recipe Strawberry BHA Pore Smooth Blur Drops. Very happy to report that these are super, super lightly fragranced, which is great because I do not like strawberry scents. I feel like I haven't even used this that much over the past month, and I'm already like down to here. I don't know if it was completely full though. It does have one fluid ounce. This, I do like the consistency of. It does make my skin feel smooth overall. I don't notice that my pores specifically looked filled, but there is more of like a smooth appearance. So I like this well enough that I would like to finish this but not repurchase it. It also only has a six month shelf life. I'm so glad I've seen that because I'll probably prioritize this over other primers to use it up, but I don't think you need it if you have like super oily skin with lots of big pores and you're looking for a miracle worker this is not that but it's good at number 12 i have the Colfi main match concealer and i got one of the new shades fudge knock notch i don't know n-a-a-c-h and this is a great brightening shade for me this concealer i would say gives medium coverage it has a little bit of a thicker tackier formula which is fine it blends out well and it does not make my makeup patch off underneath which is great i feel like other tacky products can do that you guys know i love this flat paddle applicator i feel like it really like shellacs products on really well 
This is something that I will use up and not repurchase. I do like the Kosas concealer better for more of a clean beauty brand. And then of course you guys know, I just love my Tarte Shape Tape. And then at number 11, I have the Tower 28 Swipe Up Serum Concealer. I got this in PR, which was so wonderful. I have the second shade BU and the third shade CC. CC is a little peachy for me and a little dark, so I'm gonna try to use this up next year as a corrector product. Let me just swatch these concealers for you. And then BU, the second shade, is a pretty good skin tone match for me. It has more of a neutral undertone. It is not really light enough to brighten, so I think ideally I would need to mix this with something else. But in store, I did swatch the lightest shade, and that would be too light for me even to brighten. So I feel like I would need to mix one and two. If I would have gotten one and two in PR, I definitely would have mixed them. But because I got shades two and three, I'm not going to go out and buy one. I will just mix it with something else. But I like the Tower 28 concealer because it is more of that serum. It is a little bit thinner, smoother. It's not as tacky as the Colfi, but I do still feel like I get that same more medium coverage. It blends out nicely. I really have no issues with it. I do get a little bit of creasing with both of them, but basically I just try to blend out my crease right before I set my under eye and I don't really have any issues. So for these swatches, the top one is Tower 28 CC, then BU, then the Colfi Concealer. Now we're in the top 10, but these next three are still in the fine category. And at number 10, we have the Kosa Sun Show Bronzer in Waves. I bought this because of Lauren May Beauty. I also am very fair. I have a warm undertone and I thought that this would be a nice bronzer shade for me. And I think it is, but I would like it to be a little bit deeper. This works well with more of a dense brush around my hairline, which is where usually bronzer looks nuts for me. This works well there. When I try to put it on my cheeks, I feel like it's not showing up enough, which is why I wish it was just a little bit deeper. So I do think that this is good. It does, you know, have a purpose in my collection, but at the same time, I probably could have done without this and this and probably this too, and maybe this. Like, I think that all of these are like, oh, those are good, but not amazing. Once I use these up, I will not repurchase them. Something else that is good but not great would be the Kosas Wet Stick Lipsticks. I chose the color Heat Wave, which is a really nice, more neutral peach. If you like this color, they just released a holiday set that has a full-size lipstick in Heat Wave and a mini lip oil for the same price as this on its own. So if you're interested in this color, get the set so you can get a free gloss. Why not? And wait until the VIB sale, which is coming. So this is a super pretty color. Definitely my type of shade. This is a nice, thin, shiny lipstick formula, but this is thin. It almost feels like more of a tinted lip balm like the Rare Beauty, like the Persona that are thinner in consistency. I wish this was a little bit thicker like the Makeup by Mario Moisture Glow Plumping Lip Serums. I think I would have liked it more, but I think this is good enough that I would get some good use out of this. I would love to use it up, but I am glad I did not buy more shades. First off, almost all the shades look basically the same except for a few of them. I really wish they would have switched it up, but yeah, it's, it's fine, not amazing. I do like the packaging, I like the shape, and you have a magnetic closure, which is nice. Also, just a light vanilla scent to this. It does not have that stank smell that the lip glosses do, thank God. And lastly, in the fine category, at number eight, we have the Lawless Forget the Filler Lip Liners. They released a bunch of shades. I have a swatch picture of all of them on my Instagram, but these are the ones that I have tried. So far, we have got Honey Rose, nude honey and pink sand and these are a wooden lip liner pencil but these are still very smooth and creamy today i used the honey rose to line my lips i filled in the corners and then i rubbed my lips together and got a really easy natural ombre lip i love that i know some people like more stiff lip liners more dry lip liners i don't i find them to be uncomfortable on the lips these are super comfortable and really pretty. So going from this way to this way, we have got Honey Rose, Nude Honey, and Pink Sand. So these are really great. 
if you are interested in a shade, I do think that the formula is fantastic and why not pick it up and wooden lip liners seem to last for a really long time. So now we have my top seven products, the things that I'm calling favorites. It's sad to only have seven favorites out of 22 products, but coming in at number seven, we have the new Patrick Ta Double Take Cream and Powder Blush in She's Flushed which is the lighter, more neutral of the shades that was just released. And I wanted to compare that to another color I already have, which is She's Blushing. And you can tell this one is just more nude. You can see a difference in the powder blush, but you mostly see a difference in the cream. So here is powder and cream of She's Flushed and then cream and powder of She's Blushing. So you don't necessarily need them both, but I can see the differences. So these are super pigmented. The powder is pretty powdery, so I do try to go in with a light amount when I apply it to my cheeks, and then I do do what Patrick recommends, which is powder and then the cream on top. So I am using a beauty blender to apply the cream. I try to just use a little bit because they are very pigmented. And the reason that this is ranking lower is just because I have to be more careful when I use it, but it is very pretty. I don't think I necessarily needed the both of these, especially because they're so pricey, but at the same time, I don't regret it. At number six, we have the new limited edition fall shade of the Buxom Full On Plumping Lip Cream, and this is in the shade Pumpkin Pie Latte. I'm wearing this today, but over top of a more like mauve plum lip liner, so it looks very different than what it does in the packaging. I was thinking this was more of a cool nude, and it is compared to other things, but you can still see the warmth in there. So I wanted to swatch this next to another limited edition shade from a couple years ago, which I think is gonna be a little bit more pink. So first we have the new shade Pumpkin Pie Latte and then Sugar Drop from a couple years ago. Sugar Drop definitely is a little bit more pinky tone. And I do think this one looks super beautiful. Really happy to add this to my collection. I do have other Buxom glosses shade wise that I prefer, but I do think that this is a flattering shade on me and I do want to wear it again with more of a like warm lip liner. I want to wear it more of it as true state, but I really wanted to try this again before today's video. But I do think that this is a good one. If you like this color and you like this formula, definitely pick this up. At number six is a new formula to me. This is the Live Tinted Hue Gloss. They had three original shades, they launched three more, and this is one of the newer shades in the color Grace, which is a really pretty rosy pink. There is a little bit more warmth there. I love that the applicator is a little bit chunkier, and this actually has some pretty nice pigment to it. I was thinking it'd be a little bit more sheer, but luckily I was able to swatch this one in person, and it is such a pretty, like, warm, rosy pink. This is a little bit thicker. There is a bit of stickiness to it, which I think is fine. It helps it be more long wearing. It does still have some nice glossy shine, but compared to the Buxom, you can see it does have more pigment. So I am interested in the shade Proud as well, which is a bit more warm tone, but these are only $20, I believe. Really nice gloss. Then at number four, we have the Rare Beauty Soft Pinch Tinted Lip Oil. This is in the color Honesty, which is the warm nude color. It's a little bit darker on the lips than I anticipated, but I think it is super beautiful. And this is a really nice lip formula. This is like a glossy lip stain. It isn't like a regular lip oil. I think that point has been talked to death by now. But this is really nice, happy to have this color, super beautiful, and I like the way that it wears. Then at number three, I have the new shades of the RMS Redimension Hydra Powder Blushes. So we have the color I'm wearing today, Cure Royale, the Nude Crystal Slipper, and then this freaking stunning shade, Bohemian Girl. And then I have one of the original shades that I tried for the first time this month, Hanky Panky. This is so scary looking in the pan, but I went in with more of a fluffy brush, a really light hand, and it ended up looking beautiful. It does have a pretty strong blue shift, which I was afraid of, but it looks nice. Here is Hanky Panky and Cure Royale, super different. And I'm gonna have to do some swatch pictures on Instagram because I wanna show you that this one is different from Pomegranate Fizz as well. That one is a little bit like 
warmer this has a bit more berry and I wanted to show you the difference between crystal slipper and maiden's blush crystal slipper is lighter and you can tell it is warmer and I wanted to show you how these two compare to MAC Warm Soul. I told you that I thought Maiden's Blush would be a nice replacement for me, but I actually think Crystal Slipper is much closer in color. Here is Crystal Slipper and this is MAC Warm Soul. Crystal Slipper and Warm Soul. Definitely not exactly the same, but close enough for me. And I just really love this formula. I do not like most baked gelée products, but I don't really mind it in a blush because I like a dense angled blush brush anyway. I find that this picks up the product perfectly. I get a lot of pigment on my cheeks. It is buildable. It's a really, really nice formula. And I'm so glad they added these new shades. I do think it definitely added something to their lineup. Then at number two, I have the Natasha Denona Yucca Palette. I created several different looks with this. I was able to use every single shade. I will have my different makeup of the days linked down below. Some of them were tutorial recreations from others. Whenever there's a palette that comes out, I always look for a compilation tutorial from Patty Alonzo because she does the most amazing tutorials and this is so pretty I'm so glad that only this shade and this shade are that like weird matte formula but that I can't stand and luckily this is a lower lash on color for me anyway this one I am wishing this was just a regular matte because of blending purposes I feel like this has a scent to it it smells to me like french fry oil the way that kosas bronzer smell this smells like this which is a little bit annoying but i do wish that there was a little bit of difference between some of these colors but i do feel like there is a decent amount of variety i always wish there were a few more shimmers but i'm really happy with the quality of this palette and i really enjoy the looks that i created and i was able to get this for a really good deal i had a coupon and a gift card so i didn't end up spending that much out of pocket and it does add some variety to my personal collection so i do think this is a good palette from natasha Genona. and then at number one we have what i'm wearing on my lids today and my outer corner lower lash line the fantasy cosmetica bard palette this is my favorite out of the palettes that they've launched Tons of people have codes. Definitely use Karen Harris's code, which I believe is KH Makeup. I'll have it down below. I love Karen. I always use her codes when I can. And this is so beautiful. I love that we have five shimmers and four mattes. I also love that the five shimmers are right in the middle and the mattes are on the outside. I wish all of their palettes were set up like that. It just makes me so happy. These are so nice. These mattes are very pigmented they blend nicely and these metallics are just insanely beautiful i was so happy with the performance in the color selection here this is definitely a really easy to wear fall palette but the formula of these shades packs more of a punch than some others so absolutely love this one and i picked this over the natasha Denona because it's a little bit more wearable for me but so fantastic. So guys, I know this was a long video, but that was my ranking of all of the new products I tried in September. And I would love to hear your thoughts if you've tried these things. And I hope you all will subscribe to see all of my videos. But to hear about the products I'm going to be testing over this next month. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye guys.